The SAT likes to ask about shifting graphs because it's, it's more conceptual than just asking about the graph itself. And you have to remember that when we shift uh, up and down, basically along the y-axis, that's the easiest kind of shift we can do. So we could graph this, but it's mostly going to behave in a very kind of normal way. So um, what we can do, since we're being asked about the y-intercept, is we can find the original y-intercept and then just shift it according to just basic addition and subtraction. So uh, y-intercepts are easy. We can kind of even just tell from the answer choices that we have to put in zero for x. So let's do that. So um, that's going to be uh, 27 times 0 plus 33y equals 297. So, of course, zeros knock things out. So that's good for us. So we just need to divide by 33. For this, I would just use regular calculator. So 297 divided by 33 is 9. So I'm surprised that's actually not an answer because some people are going to pick that just because they feel like they've accomplished something and, and that feels like you're done. Uh, but we still need to follow the instruction of shifting it down five units. That just means the whole graph is going to go down, meaning the y-intercept is going to go down as well. So we subtract five and we get four, and that is choice A. So that's it. That's the whole thing. Now, uh, we could do this a little bit more visually if we wanted to. I know this isn't written in y equals mx plus b format, so you could type this in. The downside of that is I feel like we're going to get some pretty big numbers here. So 33y equals... 297. So that's not so bad. There it is. There's our y-intercept. Um, now, because this isn't written in y equals mx plus b, it's a lot harder to show the shift uh, like by graphing it because we, we really kind of need it to be in y equals format in order for that plus minus thing to work on the entire equation the way we would want. So the most you would really do here is just kind of look at it, be able to see now definitively that the y-intercept is nine. And then again, again, same thing, shift it down five units. But now visually you can be like, okay, going down five from nine is four. Like, uh, yeah. In order to really shift it, I think what we would need to do is, oop, let's do this. 20, oh, gosh darn it. 27x plus 33. And then... Now, because the y isn't alone, it has to behave a little bit like an x when we do shifts. So x, uh, y minus 5, and that equals 297. And actually, no, see, I just did it wrong. It's a plus. Uh, because, And that's what I meant to do. I just kind of lost it in it, right? So they're shifting down. So you think of that as a minus, right? But because the y isn't alone... The, the shift has to kind of get incorporated into the y in the same way that when we shift left and right, we incorporate it into the x by putting it in these parentheses. And when it's in the parentheses, like most things in parentheses with algebra, it, it's the opposite, right? Think about how you're getting like your factoring to get the solutions of an x-intercept. Uh, those are going to have the opposite sign, right? Uh, things like that happen We have parentheses. So here, even though we want to shift down, if we wanted to do it this kind of like longer way, we would have to actually make it look like an increase, a plus in the parentheses. Is that confusing? Hell yeah. Yeah, that's awful. This is why we don't always need to go this like algebra route with things. You're better off just visualizing it either by plugging the point into the equation like I did or by going to the graph and then seeing the, the shift go down. But yeah, we should be able to move it down. And, and yet if we do it with this equation, it actually looks like it's going to go up because of the, the plus. But that's translations. That's, they're kind of counterintuitive sometimes.